anyway, welcome everyone, everyone who's here, whatever time you're in, to another Open Office Hours um, ACF Chat Fridays. Um, I'm just going to quickly whip through the housekeeping stuff. We're recording as we are now, which is good. Um, it's going to be on the WP Engine Builders YouTube channel, so people can go back and uh, view it and people who aren't able to come. I'm Ian Paulson, the product manager. We've got the team, some of the team here. We've got Liam, um, one of the engineers, Matt, one of the engineers, um, Dale, the designer, Brian, engineering manager, and Damon, also from DevRel, which is great. We normally have Mike in from content as well. Um, what is what's on the agenda? I guess the first thing I just wanted to call out was hopefully next week we're going to be launching um, what what we're calling the ACF annual survey, which will be the first time ACF will have done a kind of a big survey, but just trying to get insights into how you guys or how is everybody building sites with ACF? Um, what are you using in ACF? How are you building sites with WordPress? I think it will be quite helpful for, for us for a kind of a, a pulse check to see how WordPress uh, is being is being used now as it's kind of changing all the time. We, you know, it's good to get insights from these kind of chats, but it's a much smaller audience. So hopefully um, the survey will, will be helpful for us and, and for everybody just to sort of make ACF better and, and keep it on the right path. Um, so we'll be launching that next week. We don't have it and we'll probably have it open for maybe two, three weeks. So if we don't have it open by the next chat Fridays, I was going to say we are going to email everybody about it. So if you're not already signed up to like the ACF newsletter, that link in the chat is going to take you straight to the footer of our website where you can put your email and name in and get onto our newsletter. And you'll hear all about the survey when it comes out and product releases. And it's the best place to get to keep connected with what we're doing. Um, and then this week, not necessarily got anything specifically we wanted to talk about, but I did want to ask and feel free to use the chat or uh, the Q&A that is uh, the Zoom feature that is just to the right of the share screen button in your Zoom toolbar. Um, I wanted to ask, how are people getting on with ACF 6.1? Are you registering your custom post types with ACF now instead of your previous method? Or is there anything that's stopping you? How, you, how have you found it? Any, any quirks or any issues? And yeah. I just wanted to ask, has anyone built anything cool recently they might have wanted to share? Um, but feel free to ask whatever burning questions that you've got or anything in either in the Q&A or the chat and we'll try and answer them. So yeah, fire away, I guess. Or... I guess I'm the only guy on that's uh, not part of your team. <laughs> yeah, we've got... We've got Christoph, David, Earl, is it Michael? There's quite a few people join now. Well, we've got 12. Yeah, I think we're, yeah, there's a, there's a few more users now, which is good. But John, yeah, we did say, ask the first question. Have you got one? I don't want to put you on the spot, obviously. Well, this may be due to lack of experience or understanding with the, the evolution of the product, but I've still been using, uh, the uh, advanced custom fields extended tool to register post types and taxonomies. Yeah. And because there's more selectivity about what I can show and what I can hide, what I can invoke and not invoke for a post type or a taxonomy. So there's a little more flexibility for me. So my use case is I create sites where I want the customer to have limited uh, ability to edit a post type. I'm sorry, yeah, edit a post type or edit content. I don't use Gutenberg. So I'm using ACF extensively to allow them to create the, the content. And I am purposely making some things forced and some things give them leeway to change them the way they want. So this might work for a post or a page or a custom post type. Uh, but I'm, yeah, I'm not using Gutenberg and I am using ACF a lot to make that uh, interface or that form that they fill out much more friendly and, and manageable for them. But uh, I have run into some uh, two things. One is some things I want to be able to turn on and turn off 
been exposed to them and it's easier still for me in ACF extended. And second of all, I'm finding uh, a lot of, and I put in a couple tickets about this about, I don't understand what stuff's in ACF and what stuff's in, is in extended because the two products are so merged together. It's, I'll ask a question and go, oh, that's an extended feature. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know, yeah. I'm asking the wrong person, you know. <laughs> yeah. And I think we, we do kind of feel that pain a little bit because, you know, ACF extended is a product that's built on top of ACF and it's deeply integrated. Um, but that does then bring confusion to what part of the plugin is causing issues or that you need to um, to tweak. There's an ACF extent. There's there's an unofficial ACF Slack that was created by the ACF Extended developer, and there's a community Slack. I think we've we've dropped. I'll try and find the link again. We dropped it in here before, and that's got about 500 developers that are in there that are that either just use ACF or they use ACF and ACF Extended as well. But we commonly see people saying, "Oh, I've got this issue, um, and it, the thing is doing this," and the developer from ACF Extended kind of goes in and tries to p pull apart and is it an ACF extended issue or is it an ACF? And if it's an ACF thing, he'll then point people towards our support. Uh, but he does give pretty good support in, in the ACF extended Slack. Um, so yeah, I, if we can find that, yeah, thanks Liam. Cause it might be worth John joining that and, you know, posting questions or, you know, he, he's very hel helpful Conrad about anything that either is an ACF extended thing yeah, that I he just, can help or. I yeah. Yeah, I, I just send him a ticket directly and he's been very cordial to respond and very helpful, very patient. And uh, I, I guess what I was gonna say is you you had mentioned that you didn't want to step on his toes on stuff. You know, things that you're doing in ACF Pro or ACF at ACF Pro and things that Conrad's doing, who has been a you know, wonderful supporter of ACF even before you guys purchased it. And obviously we want to keep him motivated and, and happy. Uh, at the same time though, you are doing some things that step on his toes anyway, like yeah. registering post types, for example. But then the other side of that coin is not everybody's going to go out and purchase extended. So it, it must be a, a difficult, uh, decision process for you to to figure out how do I continue pushing ACF Pro forward but at the same time how do I keep from stepping on Conrad's toes must be yeah. difficult it, yeah it, it is tricky but I think some things that are, are made easier than others like the custom post type and taxonomy piece you know he, he put that into ACF extended a while back and obviously that was heavily used and it was something our users who didn't necessarily know about ACF Extended wanted and kind of expected ACF to do because it was part of content modeling in general for WordPress. And it was something that we, yeah, obviously felt strongly about that should be an ACF. Um, but the good, I mean, the good news is because it, ACF Extended and Conrad are, you know, part of the ACF community and because he's one of the biggest, or ACF Extended is one of the biggest third party plugins that build on top of ACF. We speak to him. We have a good relationship. We let him know what's going on. You know, he has to kind of react in a, in some ways to when we change the UI, for example, and that that made him have to make changes in his plugin. But we gave him the heads up. Obviously, the CPTs was was coming, um, and I think you know he may, he may or not have joined because he sometimes does come. And I don't want to necessarily speak for him, but the conversations we've had have been centered around what's best for ACF and ACF users, and if that means taking features that you know, he put into the market because if he put it in ACF extended and then moving that to ACF core, he's okay with that in general, because it's for the benefit of the plugin and the users. And of course we kind of respect, well, we respect that and we respect each other, but yeah, I think there will be more of that, I guess, because we're talking about options pages and being able to register those for ACF Pro users, instead of having to do that in code, you know, having that in the UI and having that much more uh, nicely linked in the workflow of creating fields, and then realizing, oh, at that point, I actually want these as global fields, and then having to bounce back to your editor to register the options page, and then go back to the field group to select that new options page, like having that all done in the UI natively with with ACF is a benefit for everybody. So I, I don't think 
uh, it's it's problematic at the moment. I think Conrad is is quite happy to see what we're doing. I think he, he's generally pleased that we're doing everything we can to make ACF better. What what however yeah, okay. that means, you know. Yeah, it could really help him. Can I ask one more kind of crazy question, if I may? Um, I ran into this today, and I, I am admittedly not the advanced developer coder that many of you guys are, but uh, I'm having to write code to make it happen, and and I. You know, I figured out how to do it, but uh, it, a case in point, an example, I wanted to take a field that was all the con, you know, I told you my, my scenario is I'm having my uh, clients enter, for example, the content that's going to go on a page or in a custom post type in a, in a WYSIWYG box or, or whatever, you know, text field. And I want to generate an excerpt from it and save it to the post excerpt so that when I, I use bricks so when i throw that excerpt item on the page it's just the excerpt like if i'm showing like an archive and i want just little blurbs for each one it would be pretty cool if we could assign fields to different parts of the post i don't know if that's crazy or beyond the scope of what you guys want to do but it would sure be cool not to have to write code to do that yeah yeah, I think it because ACF has always sort of realized at some point that you can write better content than just using the the post content WYSIWYG. So that that's why people sometimes put the ACF content above, although the ACF fields above the content, and you can't really do much about the title. But having yeah, having that sync to excerpt would be cool. Yeah, I, if you hadn't already said it, I think my first thing would be like, yeah, we can you can do that in code, and you can hook into the save of the post event and then you know go and grab that field and stick it in the excerpt but I, I get you it's that's slightly onerous but it might not necessarily be a, a thing that everybody you, you wants to do yeah you mentioned something else too that i ran into this week um i wanted to save a field to the title of the post and in acf extended i can turn off the title and then i can fairly easily assign a field to be the title but when i do that then i can't use permalink anymore ah okay really weird <laughs> it's like why <laughs> yeah so I... once it once the post itself doesn't have that title then permalinks don't present anymore yeah, I, I presume you, you'd need to have that title hidden rather than totally taken away and then syncing to another field. So it still gets saved as the title to then keep permalinks working and, you know, the slug that, so you're or saying, the post name. So, so you're saying hide the actual generic default post title? Potentially, yeah. Yeah, you, and could, then, just, you could deploy CSS, right, just to hide, that, hide the title. So but I do that with code, it. right? I do that with code, right? Yeah, you'd have to you'd have to have CSS that loads in the admin to to do that. I, I assume then if if that's a feature of ACF, then he's you know he's making that available. But you know the permalink is is well, fundamentally part of the. He's the allowing me to hide it. He's allowing me to hide it. But and again, this is not an ACF extended support session. But he's allowing me to hide it, and once I do, then I can, like I say, save a field to be. The title of the post but then that permalink feature goes away hmm. yeah it sounds like maybe there's the title's being saved but the post name isn't also being saved because it would create a slug based on that post title but yeah i, I think conrad would be able to help definitely with that um just but yeah i mean i, I appreciate the question john as well because the, the acf extended question comes up a lot and obviously we're trying to trying to make sure that the community is just benefiting from both plugins together but yeah it's it's difficult when support is is hard to know which 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 plugin it comes from the problem so those are the things i ran into this week i'm sure other people have questions too but i appreciate being able to participate thank you yeah, that's fine. And, and anybody else who's asking questions in the in the Q and A or in the chat, if we if we go onto those questions and you want to give some more detail, like feel free to unmute as well. And Damon, we are not going to la launch ACF AI anytime soon. On I don't think. 
unless I am already an AI person. That's I just... did I did test ChatGPT at some point one evening last week. I was just like, let's see if I can make ChatGPT make me a block, and it tried, and it did it the old way, and it knew how to do it the old way. You know, the, the blocks would be one way where it's all in an array in PHP, but it it really didn't enjoy the blocks for Jason, and then it just made a bunch of stuff up. And actually, some of the stuff it made up, I was like, that's, yeah, that's quite a cool way of doing it. Like, it, it literally defined fields in block.json. I was like, hey, maybe we should do that. So, you know, <laughs> I don't know where it got it from. I don't know how it learned that that is a thing to do. But yeah, the block wouldn't have worked. But it was certainly interesting to see it kind of compute and try and get there. I guess it would be quite cool just to be able to put a prompt in and say, like, I want my site to be a car directory for a secondhand car. Um, garage selling cars and I want to sell cars and I want to give makes and I want to give this data and it just goes and populates the data model by registering post types for cars and um, you know taxonomies for makes and models and creates all the fields that are needed within ACF as well I right, want yeah, we've be been talking cool. a lot recently about how we can improve you know acf.com slash blocks or whatever it could become and, and try and give some more real, real world examples so maybe maybe that's where ACF AI, AI can come in yeah. You can just type in what you want and we'll train an AI to, to build it. Well, yeah. And it's not, and the our team isn't here, but he's the AI guy. He's the one that could probably make that happen very, pretty quickly. I love how like a flipping question has just taken us down a tangent of like, oh, actually, we probably could do that. Yeah, but, yeah. no, exactly. Right. <laughs> but he's also VR as well. So you probably have to put a VR headset on in order to build your website. So you probably don't want that. Yeah, I think I get motion sickness. <laughs> <laughs> what did uh, Earl say when he was using ChatGPT and it gave me the ACF block types function, which is exactly what I needed? Oh, nice. Uh, Earl, you've asked Is there an easier way to determine when an ACF options page is being saved? Do something rather than having to use things like figure out what screen you're on to get current screen and check in the screen ID you're currently in. Liam, you look like you're poised to answer that. Uh, well, I, I, I clicked the answer because you were answering it, but no, I, I think it's an interesting question. I can get back to you on if there's any specific filters that are like global there, but you could definitely do this on the update option filter, the WordPress core filter that ha that fires every time an option is updated or saved. That would... Uh, that would let you manipulate the data based on you know the fact that that option is being saved and the only place that that option is likely to be saved is via our save page that's probably the way i would do it but yeah there might be there might be something deeper matt i don't know if you know offhand if we fire anything options page specific it would be quite nice to have a global options page yeah. name we're, rather than like the screen options or you know we're about to start looking at options pages uh for some changes yeah as, as ian mentioned for you know, registering them in code. So we'll uh, give us a couple of weeks and we'll be a lot more, a lot more knowledge, knowledgeable about exactly what gets fired along the way in options pages. Yeah, I have to imagine there is a filter, but uh, yeah, or action hook or something, but not off the top of my head. Sorry. Uh, oh, have you got what's your what's the use case there? So are you doing different things? on save and populating data? Or you is there something uh, more advanced going on per options page? Yeah, so it would be an action I'd be looking for. And basically what I'm doing is on save of the options page, if you toggle the toggle on or off, I'm dynamically generating a page in WordPress and copying a template to your theme. And then if the toggle is off and I'm deleting the page and I'm removing the template from your theme. Yeah, so yeah, if we, if we put some actions in that you can then hook into on save rather than having to do it so low level, that would help. Right. Yeah. It's, I mean, it works. It just, it feels like a hack to have to like check the screen position of the screen ID, if it equals ACF options, whatever. Um, and it runs on safe post, which it run, you know, obviously runs on everything globally WordPress. So, I mean, it does work. It's just, I feel really bad about myself every time I have to write the code. Yeah. Isn't that, isn't that just how WordPress development is to a degree? Like everything is a filter and a hook and it's just like how high up that filter or hook that you're using and the lower you get down, the more sort of dirty it feels, but actually it's all the same in a way, but it's just, it kind of feels wrong to be using the low level APIs. 
Oh yeah, no, I just meant like the string position. Um, it just feels weird to me. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, gotcha. Yeah, John mentioned about people using page builders like bricks. Yeah, we, that's a question on our ACF survey as well. Like how what people are what people are using to build WordPress sites and if they're using page builders, what page builders they're using, because obviously hearing that, but obviously hearing from like a large amount of people that use bricks or uh, Elementor or whatever, it will it will help us understand a bit more because I think the biggest issue for us is unless you put a system in place in the plugin that has like an opt-in that says, you know, we'd like to understand how you're using the plugin, but and we can you can send us the data anonymously if you'd like to opt in. We don't really have a way of understanding kind of like the, the scale of how people use the plugin and what they use it with. And so, yeah, um, the survey will hopefully help with that. And Bricks, yeah, it does support ACF pretty well. We actually had a, a, a communication a couple of weeks ago with one of their development team and they were investigating an ACF relate like compatibility issue with the theme builder um, or the page builder, sorry. And yeah, we communicated on that. So they, they seem to be pretty hot on integration. I just looked at the code for options pages so I can give you a better answer. And, and the answer is that it, we basically save it as, as, you know, by the time it gets to the point that it's being saved in the stack, it's just treated like any other options page or any other page rather on the site. It just knows the internal ID is, is options. So there's nothing specific for options pages. But uh, yeah, we can, we'll definitely be, we can definitely make sure we add something like that in the future. Yeah, sounds sounds an interesting setup, Earl. How are you doing that? Um, I feel like I'd like to hear more about that another time. And what have we covered? So some people have said they're using CPTs or they've tried it out. Has anyone built anything cool recently? Or any any particular project that you're proud of with ACF recently? I'm curious if anyone from the WP Engine team or anyone really has built headless with ACF and has a strong opinion on REST versus GraphQL. Um, this is, I haven't used GraphQL myself, but I've used REST before. So I would lean towards wanting to use REST just so I don't have to relearn something new. But um, you know, I, from what I see, everyone uses GraphQL. So I don't know if there's a strong reason for that or it's just the thing people do. It's a good question, Earl. We, I know we've got uh, Damon can can give us some more info on when, but there's a build mode live, uh, the WP Engine DevRel kind of meeting office hours. They're, they're, that's probably the kind of place to ask that question because they can go more into detail about you know why GraphQL is better for that kind of thing. Um, I know that obviously we've got Jason Ball in uh, in WP Engine working on the advanced custom fields GraphQL plugin that's going to get re-released re soon, or rewritten, I think it is basically, uh, to support all of our custom post types and things like that. Obviously, you know, headless is a, a big growth area of WordPress and it's, uh, you know, CPTs is, is, is really useful for that. So uh, we expect to see more of it. I'm like you, I'm a, I'm a REST guy, right? I, I've come from, yeah, basically all the WordPress APIs, which are all REST. So, so GraphQL is also scary and terrifying to me, but every time I've kind of played with GraphQL in, in WordPress, uh, the admin's pretty cool, right? I don't know if you've been in there and, and kind of, if you install it, you can just kind of click around and say you want a few things and hit go and you get it from all, you know, from many different post types and things merge together. I think that's kind of the benefit of GraphQL over, over REST is that you can get more than just a single object so it's less calls which i guess makes it more performant for headless but uh yeah i'm looking at damon here to see if he gives me evil eyes that i'm saying something wrong here because he's definitely the expert on the on this stuff uh no i i'm not an expert on the headless <laughs> side to be honest um but i do i think the headless office hours um they're i don't think they're doing that anymore but 
the discord they have a great discord community for um anybody can drop in and i'll drop the link in the chat for that that would be a great place to follow up over there yeah i think if you if you would get the chance to watch any of jason ball's kind of walkthroughs or webinars or anything like i could listen to that guy all day because he just he just is such a good presenter and like live demos of the graphql stuff and using like what Liam was saying, where you can just go into like the, it's like an IDE inside WordPress where you can just write requests and just go and get some data back and just to test stuff out and debug. And like, it does seem pretty cool to be able to get everything in one request rather than doing multiple things with REST. Um, but yeah, I mean, when we talk headless, like headless is obviously big, but there's the, the piece in WP Engine, which is the Atlas platform, which is a WordPress backend um, a no front end all in the same um all in the same platform and all in the same sort of plan that you buy um and that is very much tightly coupled with wp graphql um you can build sites with faust js which is the the wp engine sort of way of building front end maybe that's not the right way of saying it but also acf is now integrating tightly in that workflow so you're building out your headless sites in wordpress to model your data and then fill out that data and then build your front end but I think you'll, the headless front end could be, it doesn't need, it's not as opinionated, but you can use WP GraphQL to get the data there. But yeah, I, I did just post a link to that, a recent headless article that kind of touches on all of that. Um, which I thought would be quite interesting. Yeah, if you're interested in headless, Earl, we can get we can get Jason to come join us on one of these um, in, in a couple of weeks or the one after that. But I'll find out when he's going to release the plugin because if we if we time it around then, then uh, we can actually do some live demos of, you know, using ACF to create CPTs and then get all that data into a headless site. That would uh, that would be a cool cool session for a chat Friday, I think. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, no rush is not on my account, but um, yeah, I've just been getting more interested in it because like a hundred percent of our content is driven by ACF on the site, and then it's you know stored in Gutenberg. And the output, though, we use Stencil.js web components. So uh, we just basically JSON and code everything that comes from ACF and dump it into Stencil.js. So it would be cool if we could just directly query um, on the front end and inject it into web components instead of having to have the front end PHP load. Yeah, that's cool. And there's, I think that's one of the things I like about headless is like there are so many so many ways of doing it, right? And if you want to do REST, you can. If you want to do GraphQL, you can. And there's just a, a million front end libraries as well. I think that's one of the good things about Atlas is well, I know I've seen I've seen a lot of stuff about Faust, but it doesn't care about what you actually host on it. So if you want to throw a, a different front end library on there, you're good to go. Yeah, but that's a good. It's a good chat for a future um, future chat Fridays for sure. Because once Jason's released the the update to the ACF add-on for WP GraphQL. That would be great timing. But we're you know just opening the question, uh, opening the floor to the question again is like with these chat Fridays because we're doing them every other week. They come around quite often, and you know we don't want to sort of bore people with you know not having anything to talk about and and just relying on questions. So if there's anything that you might want to talk about specifically coming like next time or uh, you know in a future episode like should we have more structured discussions like let's talk about wp graphql let's talk about headless let's talk about um the pro fields or how you build sites with a certain field type or you know whatever is on uh anybody's minds would be helpful to hear i mean we'll we'll, we'll throw some stuff together for future um future sessions and obviously fall back to just a general q a chat i mean it's it's just really nice to speak to folks especially we've got kind of like a smaller number this time it's nice to actually talk with everybody rather than just us talk at you um so we're open to ideas if you've got any ideas for, for future sessions yeah normally we try and talk about what we're working on or something like that but we to be honest the last two weeks we've just been uh just been going deep on bugs really uh we've got a release coming out in the next couple of weeks that's just kind of a fairly chunky bug fix release actually as, as, as we've kind of uh stumbled onto other things as we've gone along I, i've spent the last week deep in select two especially when you when you duplicate fields because there was there was a few bugs in there that are that are sorted yeah and i guess we're, we're coming out of the the 6.1 release which 
you know, inevitably brings bug fix releases because it was quite a major feature. It was, I mean, it was quite a major release with some big features in there that are going to cause some problems for some people. And we managed to try and patch some stuff, but yeah. Yeah, that's a good shout, El. El, El talking in chat about the clone field. Um, that's yeah. a, it's definitely a really powerful field um, that seems to confuse a lot of people, right? Depending on how you use it and where, what level it's at, and various things, it can it can get confusing. So, yeah, we can uh, we can definitely do that as well. I think I think there's is there I look at Mike for this. I think there's an article on the clone field coming soon. Some some tutorials and further docs. Definitely are. Um, okay, sorry, <laughs> just realized my face wasn't showing either. Uh, Damon, Damon, and I are working on the uh, the clone field one right now. And uh, yeah. gallery has actually recently been published. We've just published a new tutor tutorial on the gallery field, um, and uh, some more are going to be coming quite shortly. Some more in depth tutorial and a bit of reorganization of the way the docs work. Yeah, one one of the questions I get a lot that I think we're definitely going to uh, uh, tackle soon in a doc, because Mike asked me this week about if I've got any ideas for blocks-related docs, but that is sharing context between a parent and an inner block, so passing data. So you say you've got ACF fields on the parent, and how do you get that into the inner block? Because I think that's something a lot of people don't realize you can do, and we mentioned it in passing in our, our 6.0 release notes, because it was kind of a, a last-minute thing that we kind of experimented with, and it worked quite well, so we, we shipped it. But uh, yeah, we definitely didn't document it very well. So we'll we'll do some more explanations of that as well. Because I think that's quite powerful, folks. Yeah, the clone field is definitely uh, one of those fields that I didn't know about for a long time pre working on ACF and I never used it as a developer and then trying to get your head around what it is. I just don't think it's very, it's very clear. So yeah, hopefully our future tutorial will, will help with that because it is pretty powerful. And I know that like there's, there's some agencies that use it quite a lot or some developers that use it quite a lot because they're, they're building, um, they're building sites, not in the block editor, but they're using sort of classic, WordPress and they're leaning heavily on the flexible content field um, to create layouts for, you know, almost like a page builder experience. And then they use the clone field to just be smart about, I don't want to keep building the same or creating the same field in these layouts for configuring a button. Because, so they'll create the button once in a field group and then pull that through to other field groups using the clone field. So it's kind of uh, an easy way to reuse fields or field definitions, should I say, not fields, because it's not, you don't use the field values, it's just going to be pulling through the same uh, field definitions in each field group. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah, you're doing, yeah. I, I, I mean, because I've never used it at, in my past life of building sites for clients, I, I now I see that clone field use case with the flexible content field, because you're sort of building layouts that have a lot of maybe overlap of the type of fields that you're going to use because you're effectively building ways of creating layouts with components in them and the, and the, the client can then fill out all the data and you, you'll then render it as you as per your design i don't know if there's many other use cases for the clone field other than just somebody who has got a ton of fields and it's a, it's a good way to organize things and, and reuse um I'd be, I'd be interested to know if there's anyone using the clone field without the flexible content field uh, I'd be interested to know how you find the UX of it because I can find I find it pretty confusing at times when you're like four levels deep and you've got recursion and and things moving by other things. Is, if you find anything that you think we can do better to expose it, then please let us know because that's the kind of that's the kind of useful feedback we get from folks that are doing those really in depth sites and you you know stuff that we just can't imagine when we're building this of how it's going to be used until you guys use it. So yeah, please let us know feedback on on that kind of stuff. I know that that's, uh, Dale loves that kind of info. Yeah, that's a good point, Christoph. Liam, asking you there, is it, is the clone field less 
use useful for when you're using blocks and ACF build an ACF blocks? I've got a feeling it just doesn't work properly inside blocks right now. I'm sure I've seen that reported from some folks. Um, and you, yeah, you're right, right? Because the block would have those fields assigned to it. And so you just duplicate the block. So you wouldn't yeah. need to clone it multiple times. So that's that's presumably why we don't get that much, you know, to yeah. talk about that being broken because it's not a common use case. But you yeah. have the same of, um, you know, a flexible content doesn't work well inside blocks right now. And that's kind of because, well, you know, how, what, how, is a, how is a flexible content layout different to a block? Because they're kind of the same thing. Exactly. So, it's, it's old. It's almost classic and blocks and they're two different things and flexible content field and the clone field are more on the classic side. Yeah, exactly. You can, you can do that, those things with blocks. So, yeah. Liam, I'd be interested if that is a real bug because my use case for wanting to use clone fields in PHP is that we have a registration form which has a ton of fields, check boxes, radios, et cetera, et cetera. So I have a registration block. Then I have another block um, where you can share your story, which copies the fields from registration into it and then adds additional fields like story fields and WYSIWYG fields to give context to story. Then there's another one where it's, it's called key context survey, but you just, it's like another reg form. So I, I probably have five or six blocks where it starts with these core registration blocks and it just copies them basically by, I have a function called get fields and it just returns an array of fields in PHP. So I run that, put it in a PHP variable and register it with ACF in addition to the other fields. Okay. I feel like it shouldn't be an issue in in ACF blocks because effectively, no. if you've got that one, if you if you're building up your your blocks with one field group that is then shared in another field group through the clone field, and then so and so until you've got one big field group with it all, all of those field groups could be assigned to an ACF block, and yeah. would have those fields in them. And that's the thing, right? A field group can be assigned to more than one place, right? So if you want to put it in a block as well as yeah a different form, then that, then that's obviously fine. Um, but yeah, try it out, man. If you if you have any issues, drop me a, drop me an email and and we'll dig into it and figure out why it's broken. That's 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 one of the things, right? We get support and some people mention stuff, um, but actually getting real data that we can re replicate this kind of stuff and see how people are using it. Then, yeah, some more yeah. context about what how you're doing it. Yeah. So uh, have you not tried that yet? Uh, are you saying because you want to reuse it, or or have you have you started building that way? Yeah, I haven't, I haven't used it yet. Um, it's been working real well with the current implementation. Uh, but while we were talking about the clone field, I thought maybe, you know, the way I'm doing it now, it creates a lot of PHP overhead because um, you have to effectively have all of those fields in the PHP memory. And I thought maybe if the clone field works a little slicker, like it just references it somehow. And, and instead of, because right now, I literally for the five blocks have, you know, if it's 100 fields for the reg form, it's 500 fields all in a PHP. But the clone field, you know, keeps those 100 in memory and it's, you know, more performant. I'd love to use that. Mm, yeah, I mean, that's a good question in itself. Um, but yeah, that seems like there's a, that's a ton of fields. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Tens of thousands. I'm telling you, we, when I say we push it to the limit, yeah, I'm constantly having to do workarounds, um, which... It's fair because, you know, like the front end, I might have a thousand front end fields running select two, and you probably don't have many people doing that. <laughs> We're almost at time. I just want, I was just answering Christoph in there saying field groups can be assigned to multiple blocks and blocks can have multiple field groups. And that's kind of what the clone field does. It, that is true. But I think you can, if you're using the clone field, say that this is the example I go to all the time, but say you've got a button field that you want to then define what the the URL of that button is, what the label is, and what the what some other property is. That's three fields that you'd stick into a field group called button, for example, and then deactivate that field group because you're never going to show that on a post or a page. Then in your other field group where you want to use that button, you know, in line with those other fields, that's when you use the clone field to say, go and bring in the button field group, and you get those three fields now exactly where you put that clone field so, so that would be a bit more difficult if you just tried to put that field group as, and, and assigning that to a block because you wouldn't have the the right positioning across the other around the other fields maybe but yeah D damon makes a good point there about child and parent blocks 
to take that a bit further. If you did it as a, if you had a, a kind of parent ACF block for that form um, and gave it an, an inner block with a defined template that was template locked, you could then include other blocks sort of transparently. People wouldn't know was, was you know, actually, this is 10 different blocks inside of one parent block. Um, but you define it that way. Um, that's another way of doing it. I think that's, that's kind of the thing with the block editor. There's, there's so many ways of doing this stuff and we're still kind of getting our heads around what makes sense for, for the best way of implementing that kind of thing. But yeah, if, if plain fields don't work, they, they should work, right? Yeah. We don't, we definitely don't want to ship anything that isn't working. So if they don't work, it's definitely a bug. I just haven't had anyone give me enough detail or context yet to reproduce it. So please, please do. I think, yeah, we've got a minute to go. It's probably a good place to wrap up. It's been a really useful session. Yeah, thank you everyone for coming. Um, we'll definitely take some of the uh, conversations and feedback away and, yeah, try and uh, try and collect some of these ideas that, you know, people are talking about and get some sessions booked in maybe with um, Jason in the future. But, yeah. Um, so I've just dropped the newsletter sign up again, just just as a reminder. We'll do we'll launch a survey next week, so that'll be the best place to hear about that. Um, and yeah, we'll see you in a in a couple of weeks. And thanks for coming. <laughs>